the ever-emerging threats of violence in our workplace today, it is critical that companies develop and maintain proactive programs that will reduce or mitigate the vulnerabilities that exist in food plants today. In order for our food supplies to remain safe and secure, each one of us must play a critical role from the CEO on down to the line worker. The question to ask is what is your role? How will you contribute to make sure our food supplies remain safe and secure? How often have you said to yourself, security is not my job? Well, that's a very common statement. Just remember, regardless of the size of your plant or the location of your facility, security is everyone's responsibility. The threat may be real, but so is our response. Every day you and I do ordinary things, like take the family out to dinner, send our kids off to school, or do our weekly grocery shopping. Prior to September 11, 2001, how many of us would have imagined that our lives, or the lives of our loved ones, might actually be in danger from such harmless activities? I wouldn't have. I didn't. But unfortunately, you know as well as I do, we're all looking at the world differently now. It may have always been there. But today, more than ever, there's a risk that someone may intentionally contaminate the very food we eat. Tampering could happen at any number of times or places, from where the food's grown, where it's processed, to where it's served and eaten, or anywhere in between. You work in the food industry, so this risk is something you need to take to heart. Food security is important to all of us, and it's important to you as an employee. As an employee, it's a job, it's your career. If we have a family, it's the way we support our families. If something does happen to your company, it's going to be a very significant event, and as we've seen in some cases, it may be a decline in sales, it may mean a layoff in employees, and the last and worst case scenario could be the closing of that specific company. Don't think that tampering can't happen here. It's already happened more than once. As recently as 2003, a disgruntled supermarket employee contaminated 200 pounds of ground beef with pesticide, making nearly 100 people sick. Thankfully, no one died in that incident. The government and food companies are doing a lot to protect our food supplies. For example, the Bioterrorism Act requires many food companies to enhance security by registering their facilities with the FDA notifying the agency of food shipments coming into the U.S., and keeping detailed records of food that comes into and goes out of the plant. In addition, the Federal Anti-Tampering Act makes it a federal crime to tamper with a food product, threaten to tamper with a food product, or file a false report alleging product tampering. We've gone to great extents to make the facility secure uh, but it's really important that if the employees are aware that they will be able to spot something probably way before the cameras do. They're going to know what things are happening that are maybe abnormal. They can bring it to the attention more discreetly to the supervisors. They can address those issues and hopefully that they can put an end at that point in time for whatever that reason may be. You may have figured out that we're not talking about food safety here, but rather food security. What's the difference? Food safety involves unintentional food contamination. Food security deals with intentional contamination by someone with harmful intentions. It's important to know that security threats can come from any number of sources. It doesn't take someone we may typically think of as a terrorist to commit a terrorist act. Someone with a grudge against your company, like an activist who disagrees with your processing policies, might try to tamper with your product to make your company look bad. A disgruntled employee or former employee might resort to tampering to get back at the company. It's even possible that a dishonest competitor might try stealing trade secrets or somehow contaminate your product for their own profit. The point is, there's no standard profile for the type of person or people who may be a threat. It could be anybody. Chances are your company has written policies and procedures to deal with tampering threats and other security concerns. The best thing you can do is be familiar with these policies and do your part to help enforce them. 
As an employee, you do have a role in your company's security program. Your company's going to have security programs, security policies, and there's things you will need to follow. The other important part of your role as a security person is that you need to be vigilant and watching for any potential issues out there and make sure to bring those to the attention of your company. The key is to prevent, detect, and respond. Ask yourself, what could I do to prevent a security problem? How would I detect that there is a problem? And how would I respond to the problem? Look at it this way. Terrorists, disgruntled employees, activists, and criminals may go to great lengths to plan their attacks. They may work for months or even years to seize the right opportunity. All you have is one moment to decide what to do about it. Consider potential security risks with visitors. You probably have visitors in your facility every day, taking tours, installing equipment, or inspecting the plant. To prevent problems with visitors, most companies have strict policies about who enters the building. Even with the technology that you're going to find at your facilities, there's still going to be ways that some people may be able to bypass or defeat security systems. If someone bypasses your company's prevention efforts, how would you detect that there's a problem? Here are some red flags you might watch for. Someone without visible ID. Someone without an escort. Someone using a camera. Or someone separated from others on a plant tour. Imagine yourself in the following situation to help think through how you detect and respond to a potential threat. What if someone you don't recognize comes walking unescorted without visible company ID into the plant? He's wearing a company smock and has a hairnet on. Maybe the ID is not obvious, isn't visible, or maybe he got separated from a plant tour. Let your supervisor know what you observed so he or she can follow up. Now, suppose for a minute that you work in your company's receiving area. Trucks pull in and out of your plant all day long. You may get to know the drivers pretty well. Does that mean you can let your guard down when it comes to receiving product? Not at all. To prevent problems, it's important that every delivery, no matter how trusted the carrier, be closely supervised. From the minute the truck pulls in, until the load's inspected and the delivery's signed for. Some food companies request that trucks be sealed to make sure the contents are secure throughout transport. Red flags that might help detect a receiving problem include unexpected deliveries, broken or altered seals, discrepancies between what was ordered and what was delivered, altered shipping documents. This could be a sign that things were stolen from or added to a shipment. And finally, damaged or altered packaging. Look for obvious problems like rips or tears, along with abnormal powders, liquids, or odors that could indicate tampering. Returned goods are also a potential concern. They need to be thoroughly inspected before they're reprocessed or put back into inventory. Say a shipment is delivered by a trucking company you haven't worked with before. The driver tells you his company just got a contract with your supplier, so you'll be seeing more of him. The shipping papers are in order. As you perform your inspection, you notice that many of the boxes look like they've been resealed. Should you still accept the shipment? Of course, this could all be completely legitimate. There may have been a quality check after the product was put into finished goods. Problem is, between the new driver, new trucking company, and question on the boxes, it needs to be checked out. Let your supervisor know what the situation is. Have you ever thought about security in your company's storage areas? Ingredients and packaging might be safely received and transferred to silos, bulk storage tanks, or warehouses. But then who's watching it? These areas are likely to have minimal traffic and fewer eyes looking for suspicious activities. Your company may have preventative measures in place to keep storage areas secure, like limiting access, 
using security cameras, or making routine and random security checks. If these security measures were breached, how might you detect a problem? Red flags here might include unlocked doors, unauthorized personnel in the area, supplies out of place, or damaged or altered boxes and bags. Consider how you'd handle this situation. You're preparing to do repair work on the company's ingredient silo when your work is interrupted by another employee. Carl, there's a jam up at the end of the bread oven. Okay, I'll be right there. You may only be gone for a few minutes. Is it worth the trouble to lock up while you're gone? Absolutely. No question about it. Every day we're presented with shortcuts that can save us just a little time and energy, but could also result in harmful consequences. The best approach is to develop the habit to always take precautions so no one can take advantage of these situations. Moving back inside the plant, does your facility have a lab on site for product development and testing? Many do, and they're often stocked with potentially dangerous chemicals and materials, like glassware, supplies that could be used to contaminate product if they get into the wrong hands. One thing your company may do to prevent problems in the lab is to make this area off limits to anyone except authorized personnel. If you work in the lab or have access to it, it's your responsibility to make sure supplies are kept under close watch to keep potentially dangerous materials in their proper place. What about chemicals that aren't stored in the lab? Food processing plants use chemicals for everything from cleaning to pest control to machine maintenance. These chemicals are both safe and necessary to sanitary food production. However, they could be a hazard if not used, handled, and stored properly. The best way to prevent contamination is to keep chemicals under lock and key. Obviously, chemicals can't always be locked up. They're needed to create a safe food environment. But when they're in use, be extremely careful. Follow the label directions and your company's sanitation procedures and look for these red flags that might indicate a problem. Chemicals that aren't put away or aren't stored in the correct place. Chemicals that aren't labeled. Chemicals that aren't approved for the job. Missing chemical supplies. Unauthorized personnel attempting to enter chemical storage areas. And unlocked chemical rooms. Think about what you'd do if you ran into this situation. You're walking past your company's chemical storage area, which is normally closed and locked. You notice that today the gate is open and unlocked. Should you just assume someone left it unlocked because they're coming right back and go on about your business? While this gate may have been left unlocked with no ill intent, it could also have been done intentionally to give unauthorized personnel access. Don't justify it away. Bring it to a supervisor's attention to investigate. Remember, reporting red flags isn't to get someone in trouble for making a mistake. It's to protect people from being hurt. All the extra caution you're taking comes down to protecting food so it's safe to eat. That means everything involved with producing and packaging food has to be properly safeguarded as well. That includes ingredients, of course, but it also includes things like water or ice used in production and cleaning, labels and packaging materials, and processing or packaging equipment. To keep these secure, it's critical that you monitor the equipment you work with to prevent tampering or sabotage. Also, make sure foreign material detection equipment, like metal detectors and sifters, are working properly at all times. If you're working on a processing or packaging line, you need to be alert to anything out of the ordinary. Red flags to watch for include missing or extra ingredients, 
missing or altered labels or packaging, missing tools or knives, missing boxes or pallets of product. What if you're mixing a batch of product when a coworker approaches and starts telling you about her weekend? She's a great storyteller. You could stand there all day and talk to her. But what's the security problem here? Your coworker's a great friend and all, but while you're busy paying attention to her, who's watching your equipment? It's easy to get distracted, but while you're in charge of your equipment, its security has to be your priority. Well, let me interrupt you, though. I really have to pay attention to this machine, so let's talk about this at lunchtime. All right, that'd be good? All right, thank you. Take care. So let's assume you and your coworkers have been alert and vigilant about food security, and your food product is safe and ready to ship. It's not your concern anymore, right? Wrong. It's your company's reputation at stake, and it's critical that you do everything you can to keep your product safe from the time it comes into your plant until the time it's eaten. What kinds of red flags might help you detect shipping security problems? Debris or residue in trailers, containers, or rail cars prior to loading. Broken locks on trailers, containers, etc. Or improper paperwork from the driver picking up a load. Suppose you're working in the shipping department and you've just loaded a truck. The driver offers to help you out and apply a security seal for you. Should you let him? No way. Even if you know and trust the driver, no, it's if it's company policy it's for you to apply the seal, make sure you do it. We've been talking all along about watching for red flags, things that stand out because they just don't seem right. So by definition, someone acting suspiciously would obviously be a red flag. The thing is, you have to know what's normal before you can detect what's not normal. The better you know the routines in your workplace, the people, the equipment, the products, and the processes, the better you'll be able to spot something that's a potential threat and make it known. An example might be seeing someone on your shift who usually works another shift. Why is he or she there? Another example, someone trying to enter an area that's off limits to only but a few employees. Even someone who stays late or comes in early might cause suspicion if there doesn't seem to be any reason for him or her to do this. Let's run through a couple of final scenarios and see if you can detect what the problem is. A contractor wants to enter your building through an employee-only entrance. Can you let me in here? I gotta fix the refrigeration. Well, what do you think? Should the employee open the door? No. We all want to be helpful, but we need to be cautious. If it's your company policy that workmen enter and leave through a main entrance, then it's important to always follow it. What about this situation? Hey, can you let me in? Do you see a problem here? It's a secure area. Is that person really another employee? Uh, do you got a badge? No. Each individual should follow your company's procedures for access to secure areas. And finally. You're working in the lab, and you receive a phone call from someone requesting proprietary information. Should she give this information over the phone? Of course not. Well, I really would like to, but the information that you're asking is confidential. The person on the other end of that line could be anyone, including someone with sabotage in mind. It's important to be cautious about sharing information about your company in any way, whether it's over the phone or with your friends and neighbors. We as a company, and really any company, can't take that risk is to offer uh, people information such as like the formulations, how much is a specific ingredient, you know, these things are our trade secrets, this is what made us what we are, 
And if we share that information with anybody out there, which could be our competitors or could be, and, and just on how we do things as general, unless you work here, we don't share that information because we don't want to run the risk of anything else happening. If everyone takes security to heart and does their job to prevent problems, the food your company produces should be safe and secure. But if the worst happens and your product is contaminated, whether intentionally or not, your company will need to immediately implement recall procedures to prevent people from eating tainted food. Nobody wants that to happen. So remember, as a person who works in the food industry, you are the first line of defense when it comes to food security. If something looks suspicious, follow your company's security procedures. Never assume someone else will take action about suspicious activity. It's your responsibility too. Your role is key in keeping the food supply safe and secure. You're helping protect the health and well-being of everyone who uses or depends on your product. There's too much at stake not to be vigilant. If you, if you look at it as a, your security like a, a bullseye, that bullseye starts out maybe with perimeter security and you keep getting closer and closer and closer to your vulnerabilities and your people are a big part of that. Someone could always penetrate your, your fence or your structure or your surveillance equipment, but your people are there to be sensitive to what's going on and, and bring attention to any suspicion that might be taking place.